Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker, the product specialist with Camping World, and today we're going to go over the 2018 Montana High Country 381TH. This is actually a really cool uh, fifth wheel. I really like what Montana has done here. Essentially, you have this gorgeous front living room floor plan, but the back end is a small toy hauler. They did that by being able to raise and lower the bed in the master bedroom. We'll show you how that works in a little bit but it is a perfect RV for someone who wants to bring a lot of items along with them. It gives you huge storage capacity, or if you're someone that wants to bring a golf cart with you and you don't wanna to have to bring a trailer behind you, you can pull it into that garage section. That way you don't have to have a train going while traveling down the road. But let's start right up here in the front. As I mentioned, this is a gorgeous front living room floor plan. Right up front here, you have this big window here. This is cool because it lets in a ton of natural light. Also, if you know you do have a nice view out the front, which not many campsites you do, but in the event that you do, you can always take a look right out there. Uh, roller shades throughout, you'll see these. I like the fact they're beige instead of black. That way at nighttime when you lower them down, it's still bright and airy in here. It doesn't feel dark, dingy, and closed in. But again, that is a beautiful window. I love the fact that Montana's putting more and more front windows on their fifth wheels. Right in front of that, you have the uh, televator here. So it's, this is nice and simple. You just flip a switch just like so, and you will see the TV come up just like that. Same thing to have it go right back down. LED TV in here, and folks, this is cool because, you know, if you just want to have conversation, you can drop the TV down, just have that conversation. But if it's raining out or you need some entertainment in here, you can pop the TV up, and just like that, everyone can sit around and watch a movie. Uh, if we take a look underneath, you'll notice a couple things. You have two speakers right up front here for great sound quality. And when we drop this down, you notice some space right in there as well as the multimedia center over here to the side. This one is a DVD player too. So if you want to throw a DVD in there, as I mentioned, to watch a movie, you can do that. Plus it is Bluetooth capable. So if you have music on your device, or maybe you've downloaded the uh, most recent podcast of the, the Stories from the Road podcast, you want to listen to that you can go ahead and hook up to that via Bluetooth, be able to do that right here in your coach. Underneath that, you have the massive fireplace, kind of with the fake rock looking surround there. Uh, it's pretty, you know, it helps add a nice little element to the RV. And that fireplace itself is cool because not only does this look great at night, but folks, this is also a space heater. Now, I don't need it on a day like today where, you know, it's 85 degrees out. However, uh, on, a cold, on a colder day or maybe, you know, as the temperatures start dropping at night, you can turn this on, it uses electricity, and that way you can warm up this front living room space here without having to use any propane. If we take a look at both sides, you'll notice the frosted glass here. We open that up, you have storage behind that. Pretty deep storage there too, it is quite usable. But I like the fact they did the frosted glass on the top and then went wood on bottom again, just helping break that look up a little bit. But you do have the storage on both sides underneath. Now this is dual opposing slides here in this front living room as most of them are. Uh, and the big advantage of that is the fact that obviously it gives you the living space, but even more so it allows for, because it's a, a wide chassis, it allows for two tri-fold sofas here. So a lot of times if you have a smaller chassis, one of them has to be a jackknife. Not the case here. Both are tri-fold. They both fold out, make big, beautiful beds. You can sleep two, per, or two adults per sofa. So if you do have guests you like to entertain, you definitely have uh, places for them to sleep as well. However, the best seat in the house will be right here. All the, all the furniture in here is the Thomas Paine collection. You can see that right on the front there. This is your dual powered theater seating. <coughs> Excuse me. So the thing I really like about this, the reason I love power theater seating, with a big coach like this, most of the time you probably will have shore power because in order to operate the recliner, you do have to have that shore power. But folks, I've seen a lot of people that struggle. You know, the, for the manual ones to be able to put the feet back down, it can be a little tough, especially if you're a little bit older, or you have knee surgery, or you just don't have the leg strength. But with these, you literally just touch a button and that will raise and lower it, which is awesome. You have a control there uh, for your leg portion and then you have another control here for the back. Right in between the two, you have a USB port. So that way, if you want to sit there and charge your cell phone or tablet, you can do that too. And then this armrest right here in the center also has cup holders in it. That is removable. So if you want to take that out, uh, you can do so. You can put it in one of the um, couches there too. If we take a look up top, you'll see a couple different things. You have a bunch of LED lights there, LED lights throughout the entire RV. 
<clears throat> not just the puck lights, but you also have accent lighting. You'll see that all throughout the kitchen, which is cool. One of the big things about this I love though, if you notice, you have the air intakes here on the side rather than a big central box. And that shows that this unit has a quiet, cool AC here in the living room. Uh, I could definitely use it right now. As I mentioned, it is pretty warm. But the quiet, cool AC is great, folks, because it is still nice and efficient uh, as your normal AC is in your fifth wheels. However, the big advantage of it is about 30 to 35% quieter. And in a space like this where everyone's sitting around, talking, having conversation, watching TV, that is what you want. You don't want to have to yell at each, you know, yell at each other to hear over the uh, air conditioner. And then as we step down, you step down into the uh, kitchen area as well as the dining area. You can see that it is nice and large. The uh, thing I like about this, the kind of the way it's set up, is even if you're right here in the kitchen and you're preparing food, you still have a view to the TV. You can still, you know, kind of be in the conversation a little bit. It doesn't completely close you off because they left this part open right here. They went more with like this uh, kind of half bar top right here. If we take a look at that a little bit further, you will see that it has the beautiful solid surface countertops to help make it blend in seamlessly with the kitchen countertops in there. You also have some accent lighting here, so this is perfect if you want to put some uh, decorations in there, it really makes it look nice. You also have some controls over here to the side. These are for the lights, basically right here. You have, again, the accent light, one up top there too. And then you'll also see you have your generator control on there. So. Uh, you know, if you don't have shore power, you can turn the generator on here. Obviously, that'll power everything in the coach, including the, uh, the power recliners there. If you take a look underneath, you will notice you have a couple uh, full extension ball bearing drawers and then additional storage underneath that as well. So not only is this decorative, but it is also very functional. Coming along to this slide out right here, you will see the freestanding table and chairs, which is what you would expect in a higher end fifth wheel. You know, you don't want a big dinette here. It really just kind of kills the look. Having that freestanding table and chairs gives that higher end look. Plus, it's a lot easier to get in and out of. Having an actual chair, you can slide it back. It gives you uh, that much more room to be able to get in and out. You also notice you have windows basically surrounding the entire thing here. And the windows on the side of the slides do open, folks. That's something that's very important to note. Every window on here, with the exception of the very front window, does open to help allow for cross ventilation. Then you also have a couple LED lights there right up top. Uh, also, if we take a look right over here, you have your residential Samsung refrigerator. Plenty of space here, folks. 18 cubic foot, you know, more than you can uh, probably have at your house or very similar because, again, it is a residential refrigerator. A couple of crisper trays there. You do have some other, uh, you do have another tray right here. Sorry, it just came in from the manufacturer, so we have all this uh, cardboard and stuff in it we haven't gotten to take it apart yet. Uh, this is your travel lock. This works pretty simple too. There's actually a threaded hole uh, essentially right in here. So you just turn that, threads it in, locks all three up. That way it doesn't open while you're traveling. Just unscrew it to take it out. Right underneath you have the big freezer. You have to love this too. You have the big freezer compartment right down there. When we pull this over, you'll see you have another space here. Plus you have the ice maker. So that's awesome. It's one of the big advantages of having the residential refrigerator is a lot of them do come with that ice maker. So you don't have to constantly be buying bags of ice. Now bear in mind, this one does run off only electric. There is an inverter uh, that is specifically for this refrigerator to help it run as you're traveling down the road. Um, but you know, once you do park, you either have to have the generator running or have shore power to have this, uh, have everything stay nice and cold for more than a couple hours. Then if we take a look over into the kitchen, again, beautiful solid surface countertops all the way throughout here. You have the upgraded three burner cooktop. It does have the glass cover on here as well. Uh, this is pretty cool. I, I actually like the way that this works. You fold this back and if you notice, it's kind of spring assisted right here, which is pretty nice. That way it folds back, locks into place. Kind of doubles as a backsplash. You do have the subway tile look here. Uh, but you know, again, that's a little more decorative. This you know, it's right there and plus the glass is easy to clean. But you can see kind of the upgraded cooktop here. Uh, you know, I like the design rather than your standard. Your grates are a little more heavy duty. And then underneath you have an oven in case you want to do some baking. If we take a look underneath the countertops here, you will see your four full extension ball bearing drawers. That's a great bank of drawers. That way you have plenty of space for not just your silverware, but some of your larger utensils too, like your spatula, serving spoons, knives, things like that. 
Over to the side here, you will see you have some good storage there too. Perfect spot for pots and pans. And if you take a look right down below for me there, you'll see kind of like that little half wall. That's actually for your uh, sink top covers. What you can do is you can take them off just like so, and then you will actually slide them in there. And just like that, it's a nice little storage spot. That way you don't have to try to find another spot in your cabinets to put them. They already built one in for you. Uh, right underneath the sink itself, you will notice you have a trash can right there. So you have to love that. Comes with it. You don't have to worry about where to put one. Then a little extra storage right over here to the side. As we come up, we can take a look at the sink itself. Double bowl undermount stainless steel sink. Folks, that bowl on the left is absolutely massive. Uh, honestly, they, they could have just put this bowl in and it probably would have been just as big, if not bigger than a lot of sinks in fifth wheels as far as actual usable space. But they did give you the uh, smaller one over here to the side. That way you can obviously wash and then rinse dishes right over here on this side. You also have the high rise pull out faucet just to make uh, washing and rinsing those dishes a little bit easier. And if you take a look on the wall right back here, you'll again see that subway tile look. You have an electrical outlet here. You also had one over by the cooktop, so two electrical outlets in the kitchen. Some controls for your lights here. Again, you have, you know, the under... One of the things Montana does really well, let me backtrack, is the lighting itself. They do a great job making sure you have a ton of lighting. You see you have under cabinet lighting right here. You also have lighting right there in kind of like the crown molding trim, almost like a soffit coming out there. Then you have, you know, lighting up here on the, um, uh, your skylight there. You have accent lighting. There are just a ton of lights in here. So they do a great job of making sure the space is very well lit. Uh, you'll also notice that your thermostat is right here that will control your uh, AC and your heat. And then you also have the max air fan control right underneath that. If we take a look up top, you have good storage up here too. Again, they help break up the look a little bit by giving you the frosted glass here. So just bear in mind that, you know, because it is frosted, you can see through it a little bit. So what you put in here, you'll probably want to, you know, have, have it be a little bit prettier. I probably wouldn't use this for food. Myself, personally, I'd probably put like my plates and bowls and things like that. That way when you look in, it's just a little bit cleaner look. And then right over here to this side, this is where I would put, you know, my bags of chips, my Pop-Tarts, my marshmallows, you know, for making s'mores, things like that. And then you also have storage right here above the microwave. Uh, microwave itself there, stainless steel microwave, 30 inch microwave, folks, it is huge. Plenty of room for anything that you wanna put in there. Right over here to the side, I do wanna show you this. As soon as you walk in the door, this is your main control panel. You'll see the motion sensor light, which is cool. That way, if you're getting in there at night, open up the door, it turns on for you. This big one that's not labeled, folks, that is the ceiling fan control. There's a ceiling fan, not the max air fan, but the actual ceiling fan itself. Your slide rooms there, uh, both your awning controls, porch lights, water pump, tank monitoring panel, tank heater. That is something that's important to note. Comes on Montana, so if you are camping in colder seasons, you can turn on those electric heaters to make sure that your tanks aren't freezing up on you. Uh, but right there is that ceiling fan I was talking about right next to the max air. And then as I mentioned previously, you do have this skylight uh, and you can close that. It is taller, you'll want a step stool, but if you don't want the light coming in on you, you can go ahead and close that off. As we come up the stairs and step into the bathroom, one of the things you'll notice right away is the pivot style door. The thing that's cool about this folks, it doesn't matter which way you enter from, whether you're coming from the bedroom or from the main living space, you can easily open the door and come into the bathroom. Without that pivot door, if it's a normal swing door, it has to swing one way or the other, so it'll block you from one direction or another. Right here in the corner is your foot flush lever toilet. It is a porcelain bowl, so it's super easy to clean. And you can obviously see you know, how much space you have in here. Plenty of leg room, great shoulder room uh, too. I'm fairly wide in the shoulders and I have plenty of space. I don't feel cramped at all. Right over here to the side, I'll open this up for you. So this is kind of dual purpose. This can be storage. If you want storage, you have it right down here as well as right here up top. However, if you want washer and dryer, folks, that's where this will go. You have the washer uh, and every prep and everything right in here. So if you want washer and dryer, this will be the place. Otherwise, again, it is dual storage. You do see you have access to that from the bedroom there too. Uh, right over next to that is the residential uh, style shower here. The thing I like about this is that, folks, this is all one piece, which means less chance for any leaks. You have a couple of shelves in here, so you have a place to put your soap, shampoo, all that. You'll also see you have a seat. This makes it nice and easy to shave your legs. Or, you know, if you want to sit down to shower, you can certainly do that as well. You have the tri-slide glass door on here, and then a hand wand to make showering nice and simple. 
plus a skylight up top. Now, I'm six foot, you can see I have plenty of space to the ceiling, but you know, if you're six four, something like that, having that skylight will give you that extra, that extra head space, plus it helps let in uh, some additional light. As far as the fan, you have the fan right over here. And then over to this side is your mirrored medicine cabinet, right up top there, a couple uh, lights, a couple vanity lights so you can see yourself. Right underneath, you have this beautiful countertop with the undermount bowl. You have the faucet right here off to the side as well, electrical outlet there. You have a bank of three drawers running down here, which is great, so you have plenty of storage for uh, you know, your toothbrush, cologne, shaving cream, everything else. Then you also have enough storage underneath the sink in case you wanna put a trash can in the bathroom. Then as we move into the master bedroom, this is where the magic of the RV happens. Uh, if you see right here in the center, this is your queen bed. And as I mentioned, folks, this whole thing, the bed itself as well as the headboard will actually lift all the way up. That way you can put things in the garage storage outside, which again, we will see in just a moment. But with it down, this is uh, obviously your sleeping space. You do have the headboard there with the shelf built in. So you put a couple books up there, put your phone up there at night, something like that. You have storage on the side here as well. LED accent light up top there. A second AC here in the bedroom. So if it is hot like it is today, you wanna run both ACs to make sure everything stays nice and cool, uh, you can certainly do that. Then right over here, you have the slide out wardrobe. Because we lost the other wardrobe to our washer dryer prep, what you have is you have a wardrobe on both ends. You'll see the hanging rod there, as well as another one right over here. And then in the center, you have all this shelving, so that way you can put all of your folded clothes. The foot of the bed, you have this little guy, which is kind of nice, because this gives you a spot to sit down, make it a little bit easier to put your socks on in the morning, your pants on, something like that. And then right here on the wall, you will see a TV. So that way, if you want to watch a show before you go to bed, that is already there. Also, if you take a look at the opposite wall, folks, you have a big window right here, which is awesome because this will let in a ton of natural light during the day if you want to help brighten up the living space or your uh, bedroom space. Or you can obviously close it down like it is right now for extra privacy or to sleep in in the morning. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the Montana High Country 381TH. Right up front, you have the beautiful painted front cap right there. I like the color scheme they used uh, here in 2018. You'll see they kind of have black, blue, a little bit of gray there as well, just to help pull in some of the top truck colors that are currently out there. So you have a great looking rig while going down the road. You'll also notice the front end here. Again, there's that big window we saw inside, absolutely gorgeous. And then you have a couple LED lights inlaid here right up front. Underneath that, you have a mirror. That way you can see as you're backing up, helping you to align your hitch with your kingpin here. And then if we jump underneath, take a look. Right here is your generator prep. This one already comes prepped. If you want a generator, that is an option for the manufacturer that you can have put in there. Again, as I mentioned, we were inside. That way you don't have to have shore power to be able to operate everything in there. And over here to this side is our battery compartment. I currently have our little uh, uh, jumper box hooked up. But you know, you can see right here, there's the top of the box. Nice battery box, hooks up, perfect. Uh, everything runs there. You will notice right here, folks, one of the things I do want to talk about, there's a battery disconnect right there. That is not your main disconnect, that is purely for the inverter. The main disconnect coach for the, sorry, the main disconnect for the coach itself is on the other side. We'll take a look at that one a little bit later, but if you want to turn off the inverter, that will kill all power to it right there. So we come around over to this side here, I'll open this up. This is one of your two 30 pound propane tanks. You can see that right there. So you have 60 pounds of propane. You'll also see the motor right here for one of your jacks. This one does have auto level on it, folks. Touch a button, it will do everything else for you. The ground control 3.0, it is a six point auto level. Uh, and again, that is one of the biggest features. I mean, obviously I've been on fifth wheels for a number of years now, but if you've never used it before, folks, it is awesome. You literally back it up, push your auto level, and you are good to go. After a couple minutes, your coach is nice and level for you. Right in here is your pass-through storage. Now, because this is technically a front living floor plan, you don't have the big, huge pass-through like you normally get. That is a very common theme you will see as you uh, take a look at some of your front living room floor plans. However, on this floor plan, they did make up for it with some storage in the back, which we'll see in a little bit. You have an electrical outlet outside here. If you want to plug anything in, whether it's a cell phone, tablet, maybe an electric griddle, if you're cooking pancakes for the whole campground or whatever else, 
that'll be the place to do it. Awning coverage. One of the cool things about this, the only slide on your camp side, folks, is up in the bedroom where it's up and out of the way. The whole rest of this is all open and they put two awnings on here. So you can roll both of those out and you have awesome camp space up here. I love that they have done that. You also have a couple LED lights there so that way you can keep the party going into the night. You don't have to get up there and hang up your own lights, just flip a switch. To get into the 381, you have the more, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the more ride step above system. This is an awesome step system too. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these before, the cool thing about this is a couple. One is the fact it's aluminum treads, so these don't rust. But the biggest thing, folks, is how supportive these are. If you're sick of going in and out of the RV and having the stairs flex where it feels like you're going to fall, I'm telling you, you certainly won't have that issue here. You also have the big foldable grab handle there as well to give you that extra support when entering and exiting the coach. Now, because these don't fold underneath. What these actually do is flip up into the door jam itself. One of the things that Montana does, a lot of the other ones don't, however, is right in here they have a strut, so it is strut assisted. These steps can be a little heavy, uh, especially if you're older, you're not very tall, but with the strut, you can see right there, I mean, it basically does all the work for you. And then put it in place just like that. That will allow you to shut the door and boom, just like that you're going down the road. So uh, again, a great step system there. We take a look right underneath here, you will notice your spare tire carrier, BAL spare tire carrier. This is cool too. Even though the tire is mounted underneath, this does make it a little bit easier to get to. You can just pull the pins, this will slide out and drop down. Again, allowing you to get to that tire without having to crawl underneath the fifth wheel. We take a look right there, folks. That is your water heater. The awesome thing about the high country is that is a 12 gallon heater. Most of your fifth wheels either have a 10 gallon, some of them even only put in a six gallon. Having that 12 is perfect for uh, more continuous hot water. We take a look right down below, you have triple axles here. They probably could have got away with two, but I'm really glad they went to three because that gives this coach over a 3,600 pound carrying capacity. So that way you can load this puppy up. You'll also see right in between, you have the Equiflex suspension there. That will help as you're going down the roads, take out a lot of the bumps and potholes, giving you a better overall tow experience. Now I talked about the storage in the back, folks. You can see that right here. You have double doors on the other side, just like you do on this side. Big extra storage area right through here. I love that they were able to fit that in. Then right in the back here, now where this wall is, is your garage, but what you'll notice is they kind of continued a little bit of storage right here as well. So, you know, especially if you have long items like pool noodles, things like that, that's a perfect spot for it. So we come around to the back side. This right here is the toy hauler portion. Now this is with the bed down. So if you travel with the bed down, this is the minimal amount of storage capacity you can get, which as you can see is still a ton. I'll give you some quick and fast measurements here. So this bottom portion from wall to wall is about five foot. The uh, depth here from your gate all the way up to the bottom where that diamond plating is, that's going to be 10 foot. If we come up a little bit, we talk about this top section from here to that top section is eight foot. Um, from here to the top right here is about 57 inches. Sorry, from the floor to the top here. And then your width right here is about four and a half. So again, that is with the bed down. You will also notice that you have a couple electrical outlets here to be able to plug things in. You have vents there as well and a couple motion sensored lights. You also see your D-rings here along the floor. You have six of those. So you can tie down your golf cart, your motorcycle, your kayaks, whatever else, you know, bicycles that you want to put in here. But as I mentioned, the bed does go up. The control for that is right here. So all you do, push the button like so, and the bed will raise up for us. And with the garage portion all the way up, you'll see how much added height you get in here. You get an impressive six and a half foot standing height. So again, this really allows you to put some larger items back here, including oftentimes a golf cart with the top still on it. And again, along the bottom, you still have that same five foot. The front, you do have this right here. So you know, you're not getting the full 10 foot. It's again, just over eight. However, that is still a great space here for an RV where you get an awesome front living area. So we take a look at the back here with the ramp up. 
you'll see a couple of the other features, including the rear mounted ladder. That way you can climb up onto the roof in case you need to get up there for any kind of maintenance uh, or just to get a higher vantage point as it is a fully walkable roof. So we take a look at the rest of the features on the back, you will see the plug-in for your detachable 50 amp power cord. Right up above that is your ladder so you can climb up onto the fully walkable roof for either maintenance or a better vantage point. Then right in the center, you will also see this one is prepped for a backup camera. This is a big fifth wheel, folks. May not be a bad idea to get that camera. And if you do, because it's already prepped, that means it'll save you money on labor to have it professionally installed. On the off door side, again, you will see the storage compartments just like we had on the door side. And both those doors are strut assisted, slam latch baggage doors on here as well. Now, one of the things you will notice is right here, you have a couple stickers saying gray and black tank. That is for your main termination. If you drop down below with me a moment, you will see your termination right here. And where those stickers are is fairly indicative of where your valves are. If you take a look right here above uh, this uh, rear tire here, you will see your black valve right here. And then the gray valve is right next to it. You do have one more gray valve and termination a little bit further up. You can see that is located right there. You can see the termination and up a little ways from that is your valve for that tank. Up front here on the other side, as I mentioned, is the other 30 pound propane tank. This side of the pass through, we have a couple things. Uh, motion sensor light in here. You also have your satellite and cable TV. So if you want TV, that'll be the hookups for you there. And then auto level right up here in the corner. So I mentioned this one is equipped with it. Touch the button and folks, it will do the rest for you. If we take a look right over here, you'll see a couple different things. Uh, again, you do have a light in here, outside shower with both hot and cold access. Everything you basically need for winterization is here, including the water heater bypass uh, and where you put the glycol in at. You'll also notice you have your city water connection in here, uh, as well as your uh, black tank flush. Um, for your water connection, you'll see this one right here. So you can have normal flow if you have city or if you wanna fill your water tanks, you'll flip this down, it still goes in that same connection and that will fill up your water tank there. Lastly, on this side, you will see your inlets for cable and satellite. You'll also see your main battery disconnect right here. This kills all power to the coach. Remember, as I mentioned, the other one is just for the inverter. And then right underneath that is your solar prep. So if you want solar by portal panels, plug it right in there. I do wanna show you that inverter real quick. I forgot to show you that. If you take a look in this pass through again, folks, you will see right there is that pure sine wave inverter. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2018 Montana High Country 381TH. If you're interested in this beautiful fifth wheel toy hauler and you'd like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.